the Gospel of Luke chapter 7. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears, and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet, and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But, but the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were, with, but those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Soon afterwards he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. Uh, <clears throat> the twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear hearers of the Word of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Time Machine is a book by H.G. Wells, first published in 1895. It was uh, made, later made into a movie back in the 60s with this guy. First time I saw that, uh, it scared me to death. <laughs> These creatures came out, tried to get him. They made a new one a couple years ago, even. It's considered by many to be the greatest science fiction novels of all time. It is credited with the popularization of the concept of time travel. And without that, no science fiction movie, Star Trek, any of that would make any sense. You couldn't go back in time. As uh, Spock would say, fascinating. Almost every science fiction work includes some sort of time travel. Yet, people have been time traveling for thousands and thousands of years. In fact, that is what our readings, the uh, majority of our readings are based on, is time travel. What is he talking about? I'll, just, I'll tell you, I'm glad you asked. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is covered. 
sins, forgiveness, unforgiveness, withholding forgiveness, receiving forgiveness. It's in our Old Testament reading. When uh, David was confronted with the murder of Uriah, the adultery with Bathsheba, the covering up of the crime, he thought he could get away with it. He thought he had all the spaces covered, except uh, the word of the Lord came to Nathan the prophet, said, you are the man. Without forgiveness, he would have been guilty. He would have died. This man deserves to die. He deserved to die. But his guilt, he, he confessed he was forgiven. That's what forgiveness does. It severs the time machine. Unforgiveness, holding it back, brings us back to the time we were wronged. It brings us back for many, many years. It is a time machine that works today, <laughs> contrary to the laws of physics. It does indeed work. What happens when we forgive? We are freed from the past. And yes, the past can hurt. In fact, it often does hurt. There's no question about it. But forgiveness frees us from continuing to go back, to going back in time, back to that hurt and reliving it, so that we can return to the present and live in the grace of God. In my first parish, I, I didn't quite know how this time machine thing worked, but it became very clear to me. It was in North Dakota, Western North Dakota. Uh, got to know a couple of ranchers and farmers who were part of my church. And one, one, one man, we kind of hit it off, and we got to do, we were in the Lions Club together, and we'd go hunting together. One time he told me about what his brother had done to him, and uh, how he had uh, taken some calves of his, and he had a ranch together, and he, he borrowed money against the, the ranch without his knowledge. And when it was time for branding the calves, uh, he noticed uh, one of the baker Baker's uh, officers was there during the branding, and he had as a mark that the bank put on his brand as well. Just a little slash or whatever it was, an equal sign or a plus sign or something. But it was, a, it was a, to say, these calves are not only bands, but they're the banks. And uh, he told me about this, and, and I could tell this was a really a raw thing, you know. And this was in the fall. Now, this is in, in uh, November. That's when they... That's when they would sell the calves after they fat them up over the summer. And I thought, well, I said, well, you know, well, what are you going to do with this here now when the bank, when you sell your calves now? I said, how much is the bank going to get? He looked at me and he says, what are you talking about? And I said, well, the calves last spring that the bank marked, now that you're selling them now in, in a couple of weeks, what, what are they, what's going to happen? He says, this didn't happen this year. And I said, oh, when did it happen? This happened 15 years ago. <laughs> every fall, every November, when they would sell the calves, we would see the, the, the semi-tractors come to the, to, the, to the stockyard out in the field. Where was he? Every year, he was back 15 years ago, reliving it every year. And, and I thought it had happened just that day. And I realized how that time machine thing worked. In our gospel today, Simon, a Pharisee, invited Jesus to dinner, and while at Simon's house, an unnamed woman comes to visit Jesus. Everyone present, including the woman, knows that she is a sinner, uh, except uh, Simon thinks Jesus doesn't know, okay? Uh, what is it about Jesus that draws her close? What is it that draws her close? She's drawn to Jesus as the one who offers forgiveness and therefore hope. Her actions toward Jesus shows her joy at what he makes possible. She is crying with, with uh, tears of joy, tears of sadness. It's a mixture. It often is, isn't it? She wipes his feet with her hair, she anoints his, uh, 
his feet with perfume. Uh, Simon's got a problem with this. She is freed from her past. There's a new uh, connection here. But all that Simon sees is not someone for whom uh, God can love and restore to health through forgiveness, but as someone who is a threat to his goodness. Uh, she is someone to avoid. Now, Simon as a Pharisee, uh, he is not a bad man. I mean, he is an upright citizen. Their, their goal was to prove and to show how much they love God by how they live their lives. They demonstrated love. They, they gave to the poor. They, they, they made it a point of, to study the scriptures, to do what God demanded of them. He is anxious to do right, to be right. But it's his, it's his goodness and the intention of that that gets in the way. He is blind to the fact that he too is also a sinner. He needs forgiveness. He needs the healing that can come from it. But often, when we feel bad, we try to look at someone who's worse. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm bad. Oh, thank God somebody walked in that's worse than me. This woman, this sinner, thank, I'm glad I'm not as bad as her or him. This is a painting from 1891, a French painter, and it paints Jesus at a French dinner party with tuxedos and linen tablecloths and everything. He's got the halo, in case you're wondering which one is Jesus, you can probably tell there. And there's this woman in this big, luxurious dress. They, they contemporize this. It's interesting. Here's another painting. It's a Chinese painting of a Mayan culture, where Jesus is Mayan, like in South America. And, and he was doing there. There's Simon on the right hand, you know, standing up there. Very, very interesting how, again, they contemporize it. Jesus tried to tell this story to every culture uh, that they're in. This is a stained glass window from the 14th century in a cathedral, Our Lady of Strasbourg Cathedral. And there she is in the bottom. Only she's wearing a medieval garb. <laughs> and everyone else is, there's the table. They're all sitting at the tablecloth and wearing all their stuff. They all contemporize this. He doesn't offer hospitality to Jesus, nor does he offer hospitality to the woman. He's the host. He's supposed to welcome people. He doesn't do anything. He's just aghast at what's going on in his house. What was Simon expecting? Well, maybe he heard of Jesus' words, uh, his deeds, and wanted to have some of this uh, uh, stuff rub off on him or get to know Jesus a little bit. Maybe he simply wanted to have a nice meal and conversation with this traveling guru, right? Jesus. He had no doubt had learned that Jesus was had some interesting insights into life. He, he preached a sermon on the mount. He, he's, he, the last time... Simon probably heard he, he, he restored uh, the, the centurion slave who was sick, you know, to health. Uh, why not have one for a meal? What, what harm uh, could it do? And yet Simon gets more than he bargained for. And in Luke's Gospel, this, he, he keeps always asking the question, or he keeps proposing the question, who is this person? Who is this Jesus? And again, at the end of this one, they, end, they say the same thing. Who is this man that can even forgive sins? Simon gets a demonstration of what it means to love. Uh, what does it mean uh, to get nourished uh, with a lesson in love and forgiveness that he had never thought about? Probably never even consi considered it. He ended up knowing... Uh, the sin that he had, the forgiveness that he got, which he did. You forgiven little, you love a little. <laughs> but what's going on here? Jesus meets both Simon and the woman where they are. But Jesus never leaves them there. Now, 
oftentimes uh, in, in contemporary art and pictures, uh, this woman is portrayed, I mean, just, it's a normal woman. But maybe we need to take Luke seriously when he describes her as a sinner. Maybe we would not be attracted to her very much. Maybe we wouldn't have liked her at all. Maybe we would have been like Simon and going, what, what is he talking to her for? Doesn't he know what kind of woman she is? Her sins are unnamed. But Luke says, she is a sinner. And maybe Simon isn't as bad as he is made out to be or sounds like. Again, maybe uh, he may have been a great guy. Like uh, the centurion who, who, who gave money to the synagogue and funded it. You know? Maybe he was doing well. And he thinks to himself that Jesus must not know who this woman is. Maybe he wasn't being so judgmental. Maybe he was just wondering, what's going on here? But what do we know about Jesus thus far in the Gospel of Luke? Jesus eats with the tax collectors and sinners. Uh, tax collectors weren't good people. They were worked for the enemy, worked for the Romans. They extorted taxes for their own benefit. They did things that hurt people. They took money from the poor that could least afford the tax. But Jesus said, I have come to be with the sinners. A physician doesn't come to those who are well. It comes for those who are sick. The emergency room isn't for people who are who are feeling fine or doing well. It's for people that are in need right now. He says, that's what I've come for. That's why I'm here. We probably would have liked the Pharisee. All the stuff that he's doing good. All the things that he does. Again, they, they express their faith in acts of charity to the poor and helping and teaching the word of God to people. But what is going on here? In this story, Jesus takes the side of the sinner. And he goes against the unrighteous, or, or the, the self-righteous, I'm sorry. He takes the side of the unrighteous and against the self-righteous. What does he do for this woman is interesting. He does what is best for her. He does not accept her, which is interesting. He doesn't offer acceptance, nor does he uh, offer friendship and say, I'm your friend. I, I want to be your friend for the rest of your life. He does not minimize her sins. He does not say anything uh, about them other than say, your sins are forgiven. He doesn't name them even. He doesn't say, yes, woman, you are a great sinner, but I've seen, oh, believe me, I've seen so much worse people than you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, it's no big deal. He doesn't do that, which is interesting. Oftentimes, uh, that's what we do, sometimes, often I do, when I think of somebody who said something, uh, says something to me, and I think, wow, well, that's not that big of a sin. But I remember a professor telling me, don't start trying to figure out how big the sin is based on your perception. The reason they're coming to you as a pastor is because it's bothering them. It might not bother you at all. But for them, they need to hear the word. They don't need your friendship. They don't need your assurance. They don't need you to minimize it. They need to hear the words, your sins are forgiven. Remember the story that Jim Nestigan told us at, at seminary. The guy was up in Winnipeg, Canada, and he went across the border to North Dakota. And he had some jams that he had bought, and he had a little backpack, and he didn't declare it. You're supposed to declare something you bought, right? And he got away with it. And he, he's like, oh. But then he started feeling guilty. And, and over the years, that little thing gnawed on him. For years, he went to seminary to be a pastor, and he and he had a nervous breakdown in class. In, 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 in class, he couldn't do it. 
And, the, and, the, and he, over the years, he had told people what he had done with, with those jams that he had bought. And what was, the, what was the response to everyone that said that when he told that story? Really? Are you serious? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. It was a big deal. It kept on coming. Everyone thought, that's just no, what are you worried about that for? And finally, the professor, he said, uh, well, let's, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's take care of this. And he, and he walked him through a confession. And he was able to say the words, in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven you. He graduated. He's a pastor somewhere. I don't know his name. He didn't tell us. That. But it's interesting. That's what Jesus does. He says to the woman what she needs to hear, and not what we might want to hear. Say, well, well, why is he picking on this woman? Why, why is Jesus taking the side of Simon, who says she's a great sinner? Well, Luke tells us she's a sinner, too. She knows she's a sinner. Jesus knows she's a sinner. And he knows what she needs to hear is the forgiveness of her sins. He offers her the only thing that will free her from those sins that cling so closely. And again, we don't know what they are. We're, we're, the sins aren't mentioned. But the way she behaves and acts and is uh, the way she responds to Jesus, we know those sins are like a cloud that cover her. Just like the clouds that rolled in this morning. They're all around her. Covers the light. He says to her what he says to each one of us. Go in peace. <laughs> Your faith has saved you. Your sins are forgiven you. You can depart in peace. I was reading one article saying, let's be like the sinful woman. Of course, that's going to perk up everyone's ears. Go, what? Let's go in peace. In every depiction, you know, go in peace. Your sins are forgiven you. It's for you. Can she believe it? Can Simon believe it? We don't know. We don't hear about him anymore. We don't hear about the woman anymore. Uh, what's going to happen? Does she go in peace? Does Simon get to reflect and understand what this is all about? This person who can forgive sins and give newness of life. I talked about Western North Dakota earlier with the rancher. And I would often go hunting out there, and this is what it looked like. There's uh, national grasslands, hunting antelope and mule deer. And one of the ranchers out there, Freddie, he's dead now, uh, had his funeral, but he would always tell us. Uh, Make sure you can hunt anywhere you want, but his land joined Forest Service land, national grassland. It would be like on the other side of the fence. He had a private land next to grassland. And in the spring, he'd let his cattle run, roam around out there. In the fall, he'd round them up, you know, and separate the steers from the, from the other cows and such. But he would always tell us, wherever you go through a gate, there's the metal, the, the one on the left hand, on the left hand side of there. What did he always tell us to do? If you go through it, close it behind you. Make sure to close the gate. Because that's the only thing I ask. Make sure to close it. Do not assume the next, if you see a car coming, that he's going to close it for you. If he comes to an open gate, he'll think that I want it open. If you open it, close the gate. That's exactly what this woman, that Jesus does for this woman. He closes the gate to the past on her. Those sins that are wander into her life now, those can't go. He closes the gate. He shuts off the time machine. It's done. It's broken. Again, does she believe it? <laughs> Do we? Believe it. Can we believe it? Yes, we can. For 
in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand.